Evening, everyone. Moving and shaking on the Reds roster tonight, but still no trades. Austin Kern placed on the 15-day DL with an inflamed shoulder, retroactive to July 9th. Jose Acevedo expected to be called up tomorrow as the fifth starter. Now, Brandon Larson, his first game back as the Reds face the division-leading Astros in the first. Reds get to Jeremy Robertson. Back-to-back -back doubles. Guillen starts the second half just like he's left the first. Barry Largan scores one zip, but Paul Wilson prone to bad innings. Had a bad one in the second. Richard Hidalgo, 3-2 pitch down the line. That'll score Berkman all the way from first, and we are tied at one. Then Adam Everett, bloop to right, it drops. And Dalgo will score from second, makes it 2-1, and Wilson was in trouble. 3-1, two men on for Jeff Blum. Base hit up the middle, scores two, and Wilson had dug himself a 5-1 hole in deja vu in the third. Larkin doubles, then Jose Guillen follows him up. Deep to center, off the wall for two bases. Larkin will make it 5-2. Wilson settled down and in the sixth. Junior thinks he's got his sixth homer in as many games off the wall and left comes up limping around first restrain the tendon in his foot he leaves the game Booney's the next batter he'll go up the middle off the bag scores Taylor who replaced Griff it's 5-3 got it to 5-4 in the ninth after a two out hit from Jimenez Barry Larkin up the middle hops past Everett Jimenez to third Larkin to second Jose Guillen up rips one to the right side and Bagwell smothers it out races Guillen to the bag. Red seven and a half back. Astros with their fifth straight over Cincy. 5 4 the final. Lidge to Hotel and Wagner. That's, that's pretty tough. You never want to get in the hole, but uh, you know, Paul made his pitches and they just flipped them in, hit the chalk line in the, right behind first base. And, uh, you know, I thought we battled back really good. Couldn't stop them. You know, just, uh, and that's baseball. You know, I mean, I was making some good pitches. He scored uh, five runs. It was a big inning for him, and it uh, was pretty much the difference of the game. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the final. I'm Brad Johansson. The latest on junior season-ending surgery. How's he coping? How are the Reds going to cope? Tiger on the prowl of the British. Does Lance get overheated in the Tour de France? And I was just thinking about the mockery that is the Major League All-Star game. But first, the injury bug sinks its teeth into the Cincinnati Reds. As you know, Ken Griffey Jr. lost for the season with a ruptured tendon in his right ankle. More on him in just a second. Austin Kern's already on the 15-day DL with a bad shoulder. Today, reliever Scott Sullivan, 15-day DL, retro to July 14th, shoulder tendonitis. Just a setup for the Astros trying to extinguish the Red Central hopes. Ryan Dempster knew he was targeted by Bagwell right out of the box, right off him, in the shoulder, in the center. Leaves a mark on Dempster, but he's okay. And once again, the Reds get on the board first. Aaron Boone in the second, jumping all over a Roy Oswald pitch. His 17th on the year, one zip. But in the third, Bagwell again. This time he flies it way over Dempster's head. Two men aboard, three-run shot, three-run strows. Then in the fourth, Richard Hidalgo, solo shot. His 15th on the year, it's 4-1 Houston. Reds couldn't catch a break. Larkin with a rip. Adam Everett with a super dive and throw to get very easily. Then Hidalgo again in the sixth. Monster blast to left. His 16th on the year. Solo shot makes it 5-1. Then Junior's replacement Reggie Taylor goes down and gets one just deep enough to make a deposit 5-2. Next batter, new call-up Ruben Mateo. Pinch hitting with a huge bomb of his own. Deep to left, 5-3. Reds threaten in the ninth. But Adam Dunn's broken bad grounder would end it. Nice play. Reds eight and a half back. Five three year final. Got beat once again, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have our horses, but nobody's going to feel sorry for us. We just got to go out and do what we can do. Oswalt really pitched well against us and then turned it over to, the, to their bullpen, which is, you know, one of the best in the game if they can get it to the late inning. So, you know, we just got to turn the page and have at it tomorrow. As far as junior, there is some good news. Today's surgery at Good Sam Hospital will repair Griffey's torn perineal tendon, 100% successful. Rare injury, to say the least, but by modern sports medicine standards, this one's unusual. He's going to have arthroscopic surgery on his injured shoulder in the next few weeks. Still a rehab, then recharge junior should be ready to go for spring training next season. I think he felt that he, even though he was playing in pain with his shoulder, uh, he felt that he was going to be able to contribute, and, and so this certainly demoralized him uh, last night and today, but now he's looking to next year, and uh, as he told me, he's got the eye of the tiger. Now with Sullivan's injury, Ryan Wagner will become the first top Reds pick ever to get drafted and called to the majors in that same season. He made only five relief appearances in double-A before he was promoted to four appearances in triple-A. 
where he amassed an 0 and 1. 4.5 ERA. He'll be here tomorrow. Well Reds had a game day today. The weather was spectacular. It was a sellout. It was Austin Kern's bobblehead day. A perfect day for baseball, right? Well, maybe for everyone but Jimmy Haynes. The top of the first two on Lance Berkman crushed three run homer. Next batter, Richard Hidalgo crushed solo homer. Next batter, Morgan Ensberg crushed solo homer. Are you noticing a trend here? Back to back to back homers, and the Reds are down five zip before they get even at bat. But just to prove they are not one-dimensional, these Astros, they showed they can take a pitch two or four or 20. In the sixth inning, Brian Reith and Kent Merker combined to give up five walks, two of them with the bases loaded. Reds are now behind nine to one. To their credit, though, the Reds clawed their way back into this thing. In the ninth inning, they were down nine to five with two on base. Jason LaRue comes up to pinch hit and lifts one to deep right. Drifting, drifting, and suddenly the Reds are within one, nine to eight. Very next batter. Kelly Sinet, he comes up. He'll draw a walk right here. So the winning run will come to the plate in the form of D'Angelo Jimenez. On a 3-2 count, swings the ball four. Strikeout, no magic comeback this time. The Astros have beaten the Reds nine straight times, and not so coincidentally, the Reds fall nine and a half games behind in the NL Central. Reds did make a little bit of history today. They sent their number one draft choice, Ryan Wagner, to the mound, making it the first time a number one pick has played for the club in the same year he was drafted. He pitched well, too. The Texas native got five straight outs, including his boyhood idol, Jeff Bagwell. In fact, when Bob Boone took Wagner out of the game, fans booed the skipper mightily. But the 20-year-old Wagner says he is just happy to be here. You know, my family are ecstatic. I'm glad I'm up here, you know. I'm glad uh, Jim Bowden just gave me this opportunity, and I was glad that you know I could come out there and you know show him what I could do, and I, I you know I thank God that I got this opportunity and that I've stayed healthy. Six consecutive home losses, nine straight losses to Houston, seven home runs the Astros have hit so far in the series, and zero. That would be the number of times Wade Miller has lost to the Reds in his career. Feel free to cover your eyes. Reds down one zip after a Jeff Bagwell sack fly. Reggie Taylor keeping it that way. In love with the glove. Still one nothing in the fourth. Graves to Bagwell. Forget it. 399 for Bags. Two run shot. 3 nothing. Bottom four bases loaded. One out. Adam Dunn hasn't driven in a teammate in 40 games. Let's make it 41. Hitting a robust 201. Then Miller blows one past Jason LaRue. One of nine strikeouts on the day. Goose egg intact. Astros look for the dagger in the fifth. Brad Ausmus over the head of Jose Guillen and right, but Guillen, watch this, plays the carom. Throws a dart to Juan Castro at second. This is gorgeous. Head to the sixth and Bags becomes the 35th member of the 400 home run club. Two out, solo job. Four zip. Reds get to Miller, bottom six. Aaron Boone, a uh, three run job. Absolute laser, four three. Graves goes six in the third, allows eight hits, and the fifth run here. His rookie Eric Bruntlett singles home. Lance Berkman, 5-3. Scott Williamson in to get some work in the ninth. Well, he got some work. He got worked. Solo homer, Jeff Kent, Astros with their first ever four-game sweep in Cincinnati to go with their four-game sweep in Houston. 6-3 is your final. We had our chances, and, and when they bring in their bullpen, man, they, they bring in some thunder. They got three guys that throw 95 to 100 miles an hour. So... Um, you know, it's 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 tough right now. Uh, just nothing's nothing's working for us. It's a nice number. It's out of the way. I don't have to think about it anymore. And more importantly, it got us a win. You know, it helped us get a win. If we didn't win the ball game and I hit two home runs by 400, then that would have obviously been upsetting. But um, you know, we got some big hits there at the end to make it easy for Wags and uh, to get the win. That, that means a lot. Okay, time for you to make a call. The Reds need quality starting pitching. A uh, duh. And you need to trade talent to get it. Which of these red stars would you least like to see traded? Least like to see traded. Boone, Casey, Guillen, Williamson. 3, 4, 5, 12, 12. Results a little bit later. Time to get some cold, hard answers from the Reds general manager, Jim Bowden, on baseball. He's on deck. Stay tuned. I met with the Reds GM at Great American Ballpark this afternoon. And as you might imagine, he wasn't particularly happy. Well, Brad, obviously, um, we're very disappointed on what's transpired the last couple of weeks. And certainly uh, this kind of play uh, certainly affects what plans you have. And I think uh, when people saw uh, the move we made the other day, bringing Ryan Wagner right to the big leagues, I think that was kind of symbolic of uh, what we felt we needed to do as an organization. Um, you, I know, were working on several deals, have been for several weeks. Has what this series done 
caused problems with deals that you've been trying to make? Well, it really has in the fact, um, Brad, that we're going to continue to pursue, obviously, for starting pitching. That's our enigma. That's what we have to overcome to win. When you look at our bullpen and you see records of 7-0 and for Sullivan and 5-0 and for Arady and 7-2 and for Chris Reedsma, and you're looking at records of you know 17 and two combined. What does that tell you? It tells you that when uh, we get the pitching, we have enough offense. We can score runs and we can win baseball games. But we can't win games when our stars are giving up five, six, seven, eight runs every time out. That's got to be corrected. Now, the one thing that does not make any sense anymore is you're not going to trade for a starting pitcher that's just going to help you this year. You know, you're not going to trade for Sidney Ponson that's only going to help this year. You're not going to be able to afford to resign him. So some of the trade discussions you had with those kind of guys are ended, and you're pursuing pitchers that are basically guys that you can control for two, three, four years or more. Let me talk about the names that you've got down in the, in the farm system right now with Seth Etherton, Ty Howington, Josh Hall, Dustin Mosley. Will any of those see action this year? I think there's a good possibility that um, several of those may get opportunities, especially the way things are going right now. I mean, look, if our starters are going to give up six or seven runs in the first two innings, I can bring a guy from AA or AAA that can do that. So, you know, uh, there's no question that we have our scouts down there looking at our young pitching. And Josh Hall the other night punched out 12, threw extremely well. Mosley's had a couple of real good outings down there. Uh, Etherton has pitched well his last four or five times out. Um, and so we're no question that we're looking at all of them and any or all of them may get an opportunity before the season's over, Brad. You had said untouchables were Adam Dunn and, and Austin Kearns. Let me first touch on Adam Dunn. He goes 41 games finishing this game without an RBI of driving in another teammate. That's a situation where you say this guy's untouchable. Is he no longer untouchable because of his lack of production no, he's this year? No, he's, untouch he's an untouchable. Uh, obviously, we need to continue to figure out ways to get him going. Uh, when this season's over at age 23, he's probably going to have between 45 and 50 homers. He's going to probably have scored 100 runs and probably have driven in 100. Age 23, that's pretty good. Remember, Mark McGuire at age 27 hit 201. Mark McGuire hit some home runs in his career. Adam Dunn's only 23 years old. Are we going through some growing pains with him? Absolutely. With Austin Kearns on the disabled list and Griffey on the disabled list, does that affect the pitches that he gets to hit? Absolutely it does. But no question he's been slumping. No question we've got to continue to work to get him uh, you know, to improve his batting average and putting the ball in play. You had talked about keeping this team chemistry together. Is that no longer uh, part of the equation? Aaron Boone, Sean Casey, maybe Guillen, because Guillen becomes a free agent at the end of this year. Is everybody up for sale? Well, no, I, I don't believe that number for sale. We're trying to get better. Uh, the mix we have right now is not working. So obviously, when it doesn't work, you always look for changes to make the team better. But again, we focus on the starting pitching first because it's amazing to see what happens when you get quality starting pitching. When we have quality starts, look at our record, Brent. It speaks for itself. When we get to a ball game to our bullpen, we win a lot of games. So, you know, the back end of the game, we compete. Our, our but that is means compete, is you've got to be able to deal guys to get pitching. No question. You okay. have to give up something to get uh, you, you talked in spring training about how the junior deal had, had been bad so far, and you were hoping this year was going to change that. And once again, junior's out for the rest of the season. How much longer do you say, you know what, next year? <laughs> it's been a tough four years. I mean, I, and I feel bad for junior. Does anybody deal for this guy if you're saying, you know what, it just hasn't worked out here, maybe it's better for him somewhere else? Would somebody else take junior's contract? People aren't going to take an unhealthy player with a lot of exposure. They want healthy players. Now, Junior, just before he re, you know, hurt the tendon, he had hit five home runs right. in five straight games and all of a sudden looked like Junior. Uh, does a team want that? Absolutely they want a healthy Junior, but you have four years of history of him not being healthy. Does it become a huge turnover now? You totally change your, your course of action the rest of this season? No, I don't think you, you do that. I mean, I think there's still a lot of quality players on this team. But as I said, our focus, we, we've got to figure out the starting pitching. We've got to give other people opportunities. We've got to continue to try to make trades to upgrade that area of our ball club. Very pleased with Wagner, though. That's the big story this week when a kid gets drafted for the first time in the history of the Cincinnati Reds, plays that same season in the big leagues, and it was only, what, 33 days? And he comes up against the Astros and retires all five batters that he faced. And uh, we're very, very pleased about that. Leland Maddox did a great job. Our scouting director. You had talked about him in the bullpen this whole time. Does he become a starting possibility at all? Well, down the road he does, but not this year. Um, this year he's going to strictly be bullpen. He pitched a lot of innings 
at the University of Houston out of the bullpen, and we're not going to injure this pitcher. We're going to keep him healthy because he has a chance to be special down the road. You hate these questions, but I got to ask Bob Boone's job still safe? We're not going to ask these questions anymore. Let's go back to the studio. <laughs> and we're back in the studio. The second of four statues to grace the new Crosley Terrace in front of Great American Ballpark, dedicated today. Joe Nuxall was immortalized in bronze, but the process to get the old left-hander here for all to admire began 15 months ago. I guess you could call this a love story that began in 1944 when a young left-hander came to Cincinnati only 15 years old. Joe Nuxall was about to become the youngest pitcher ever to appear in the major leagues. His career would last 16 seasons, 15 of those with the Reds. 58 years later, Reds fans would vote Joe to be immortalized. To me, this is bigger than going into Cooperstown, I'll be real honest with you, because Cincinnati, the fans did this, and uh, what more can you ask? It's, it's great. On April 25th, 2002, a young sculptor named Tom Suchia came to Synergy Field to show Joe his mini-me. Flash forward nine months to the birth of a life-size sculpture, the welding of the frame that would become the working model for the 15-year-old so long ago. Four days later, little chicken wire, a lot of urethane, 20 minutes to set, two hours to fully cure. I just applied the urethane foam on top of the steel and chicken wire form to serve as a nice ground where I can put the uh, clay on, where I can do all the uh, detail work uh, of the, uh, of, on Joe's body. February 11th. It's time to cook. A recipe of 300 pounds of clay applied by hand to mold a special homemade hero. Now that the foam has been carved and shaped to where I like it, we're now adding the clay, which is the final layer of this piece, where we'll do all the detailing and uh, modeling. By the last day of February, from toe to head, the young left-hander is beginning to come to life. This is in some ways the most exciting part of the project because it's still in the rough stage and, you, and you're kind of seeing, you're getting, you're evolving, the, you're seeing the evolution of all the forms. To translate this love story properly just days before the opening of Great American Ballpark, Tom needs to make Joe come to life to make people feel that 6'2", 180-pound lefty has just delivered the fastball. So he enlisted Steve, a Xavier alum who loves the Reds, to come contort his body so kind of for art's sake. What a sculptor does is translates the real world into the world of sculpture. And uh, so you would uh, you try to capture the essence of what's going on in the real world. To create the feeling of a pitcher falling off the mound and still steady as a rock. I'm very happy with how he looks so far, very happy. By April 11th, it's time to let the old left-hander see the young left-hander and let him correct himself. Yeah, be more out. Oh, more out. Okay. Okay, I might. I look into that. I can do that. The jersey on his back will bear number 43, the first Reds jersey Joe ever wore. Is that where my number was? Yeah. I'll be there. Joe's son Phil admits he still has to wipe away tears as he watches the process. This is something that everybody dreams of. And to see your own father immortalized like this is it's indescribable. 362 days after Tom showed Joe his first small-scale model, the life-size sculpture is off to Indianapolis to be bronzed. 800 pounds of immortality to be displayed on the Crosley Terrace in front of Great American Ballpark so that those who saw the young left-hander throw that first pitch 59 years ago can remember that 15-year-old boy just like it was yesterday. And those coming into their first game can begin their own love story. And until then, this is the old left hand rounding third and heading for home. Good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations, Joe.